Ezekiel was a priest by training, but he was never able to serve in the temple because he was exiled along with his family before he reached the age of ordination. Now, his training comes to the forefront in the last nine chapters of his book as he describes the new Jerusalem and the new temple that God our Father promises to his people. The city of Jerusalem and the temple had been destroyed 14 years previously. God's people had been stunned by the news and they were still trying to decide how to go on with their lives for nearly a decade and a half when Ezekiel has one final vision of comfort and of peace. In chapters 40 and following, Ezekiel is taken to a future Israel in his vision, and he has shown the eschatological Jerusalem, the eternal city of God that is to come. And in the city is an ideal temple, a perfect square in which sits the throne of God. And you can't really read these chapters of Ezekiel without flipping forward to the end of your Bible and reading St. John's Revelation chapters 21 and 22. Because what Ezekiel does through this vision is speak of the eternity of God's love and care for his people with the promise of this coming eternal city. It's very much like what the writer to the Hebrews said, that here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Because Jerusalem was there, and then it was destroyed, and this is going to happen again following Jesus' day, and no temple will ever be rebuilt again on this earth. But in the new Jerusalem to come, in the new creation, on the last day when Christ returns, God's presence will be with us again. Or more correctly, we will all be in God's presence as he calls us to him for eternity. So the perfect shape that Ezekiel measures in the last chapter of his book speaks to this holy and eternal home built by God for us. I mean, there's even a stream of living water flowing from beneath the temple that waters the whole of the earth. And all of God's promises are made certain by the name of the city, which Ezekiel reveals is written on the gates as the Lord is there. Indeed, the Lord our God is there, and he has made this place for you. His promise has been the same for millennia, and soon it will come to be. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.